Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Change Your Perspective, Change Your Awareness, Change Your Life. I'm Dr. McLena, and we're talking about theories of intelligences, um, specifically Garner's theory of intelligence. And we've covered, I think, about the seven so far. This should be our final discussion. And you probably, maybe you'll be a little surprised by it. Um, it is what is called naturalist intelligence, right? So basically nature smart, which is to say earth, science, um, maybe, maybe it's not so surprising, but, um, geology, biology, astronomy, all those kinds of earth-based intelligences, right? So it has to do with knowing and understanding the natural environment that you live in. Um, there's a lot to do with that, you know, earth, plants, stars, rocks, grass, like there, <laughs> there is a lot. I think, I think animals, um, kind of fall into this as well. So if you are studying animals, that's like veterinary stuff, farmers, um, if you are thinking about weather, weather patterns, so like meteorology also counts under this scope. So I think everybody needs to be more naturalistically intelligent. Um, the first thing people don't even know is that the earth's ability to, um, What's the word grounds you it has a polarity it has a magnetism the earth does um but it's the earth's ability to sort of not decompress you um to align you to to, to balance you out to um alkaline you if you go outside it's called grounding okay there's a lot uh dr gary brecca does a really good job of showing how the earth grounds our systems so if you actually go outside barefoot and just put your feet on earth contact with the earth will change your polarity in your system. And so grounding and understanding nature is super important so that you can use what is supposed to be a natural resource for us to be in concert with. You know, we're not supposed to necessarily, I don't want to say take advantage I don't want to say take advantage, but that's what's coming up of the earth. We're supposed to be kind of interdependent with the earth. We need it. It needs us. We breathe out what the trees breathe in and vice versa, right? People who are natu naturalistically intelligent understand that. They can recognize and categorize like patterns in the environment. They understand the plant life or um, they understand the classification of what exists in nature, um, they understand potentially things like hmm. don't ask me why guys the Hunger Games is coming into my head. I, I don't know why. Okay, the Hunger Games is coming into my head. And what I'm thinking and trying not to say but I'm going to just say anyway, is like, would you survive the Hunger Games or wouldn't you? You know, would you choke on the poison berries and die? or eat the poison berries and die thinking it was healthy for you or wouldn't you? I can tell you right now, I am not naturalistically intelligent. I wasn't raised in nature. I'm from Jersey, New Jersey, which is where I was raised in Jersey. There wasn't even a lot of grass. Um, so I would definitely be dead in the Hunger Games, okay? I'm not a farmer. I'm not intelligent in nature. I don't like bugs. I don't like the grass. I don't like gardening. I don't like digging. Right. So um, I personally want to get more naturalistically intelligent, but there are people who are just good at it. They just are, you know, plants, animals think like, oh, who's that guy who died? Darwin? No, not Darwin. <laughs> Irwin. Irwin. Uh, Steve Irwin. Uh, Charles Darwin. <laughs> Charles Darwin. No, but kind of, but actually kind of because he's the father of evolutionary theory. So he was in nature too, I guess. But I was thinking of Steve Irwin, right? Or like Jane Goodall, those people who like immerse themselves in nature in such a way that they studied life by living with it. Um, and, and now I think Steve Irwin's son does the same thing. And so, but, but still like we used to be a country of farmers. We used to be very naturalistically intelligent. Um, and I'm going to reference Dr. Gary Brecka again, because he was talking about how we, our bodies were designed to be outside in nature 85% of the time. 
We were meant to be outside. So now most people are only like outside 2% of their lives. And we completely change our physiology because of the way in which we're interacting or not interacting with our natural environment. So naturalistic intelligence is super important. Um, very interesting, you know, it's a very interesting study. Um, I, <laughs> I think I've heard it said that like meteorology is the one field that you can consistently be wrong about and not lose your job. <laughs> Have you ever heard that? <laughs> Have you ever heard that? Um, nothing against meteorologists, but nature can be pretty unpredictable even when studying the patterns, even when trying to understand what's coming. And a lot of times, you know, if you study the animals, you'll study, you'll understand that the, the uh, sort of patterns that are coming. Um, what I learned the scary hard way here in good old North Carolina was, you know, snakes flee from a storm. So one day I saw my outside little feral cats like acting real weird. They were like fixed on something. I couldn't tell what it was. Um, and I started looking and it was a snake, some kind of poisonous one I found. Thankfully it didn't bite me, but it did snap at me. It was actually terrifying. It was actually terrifying. And what it was doing was trying to flee from an oncoming storm, which hit like, I don't know, several hours later, which I thought was super, super interesting. I had knowledge of that from the book, Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston, um, written in the 1920s. So I had a theoretical knowledge of it, very different to have a, pr a practical application understanding of it. It was actually kind of terrifying. Anyway, um, you know, don't get close to poisonous snakes. As I have said, I am naturalistically kind of an idiot, apparently. Um, so if you are someone who's good at taking care of plants or you are, um, you know, outside a lot, you like to garden, you like to farm, you like to be out in nature, you want to be with the animals, you're always wondering about the sky, you're wondering about the oceans, you know, these are all naturalistically intelligent people, marine biologists as an example, right? So um, this is, I, you know, it just came into my head and I don't know why, I was thinking greenhouse. Let me just track my stream of conscious for you. I was thinking marine biology, then I was thinking the equivalent of that on like earth, I guess on land would be, I guess, you know, greenhouse. And then I started thinking of like dispensaries which is to say like marijuana dispensaries, which are illegal in a whole bunch of places now, which is technically a plant, right? So like people who are naturalistically intelligent might also understand that kind of plant life, uh, that I, somewhat medicinal plant life. And that's the other thing, right? People who understand nature, understand how to use nature as natural remedies, holistic treatments, um, herbal treatments, you know, things of that nature. And so, uh, pun not intended, but kind of things of that nature. Anyway, naturalistic intelligence, I think is something that like all of these intelligences can be cultivated, but if it's your natural intelligence, guys, I'm so annoying. If it's your natural intelligence, then it's going to be easier for you. You're going to be naturally drawn to it. You're going to be interested, right? So, um, Positions for people who are just naturally intrigued by nature, like nature, want to be in it. Um, and again, there's a lot of different ways you could do that. It can be animals, it can be earth, it can be trees, it can be rocks, it can be mountains, it can be the sky, it can be the stars, it can be the ocean, it can be the sand. Like there's so many different aspects to natural intelligence. There's so many different ways that can manifest. You might love the earth, specifically the ocean. In which case you might want to do something oceanography you might want to do some kind of whale study you might want to do some kind of marine biology right a whole bunch of ocean-based naturalistic intelligences um you might go into botany or biology if you are somebody that likes plants or earth um, you might go into geology which i think is the study of rocks if you like earth if you like the sky, you might go into astronomy, astrophysics, quantum physics, um, meteorology. I actually was just reading, a, they're like baby books. Like, so you want to be an astrophysicist and it's for like children, like babies. It's crazy. Um, all that to say that naturalistic intelligence is one, absolutely a thing. 
and two, something that I think probably we all need. I was watching on TikTok of all places, um, the, I don't know if this is a little conspiracy theorist, but you know how they talk about the Simpsons kind of predicting things uncannily? Well, they were talking about how there's a solar flare that's going to put the power grid out. And in the Simpsons, it was predicted in season 24 in the year 2024. So like Homer's building a bunker and all these things. And if you look around, uh, there's some truth to that because all the billionaires are building bunkers and there was a solar flare, solar storm that was just talked about. So I don't want to get into conspiracy theory, but I will just say it's not a bad thing at this moment in time when the world is such a interesting place to have some naturalistic intelligence, to know how to cultivate life from the ground, to be able to do it on your own volition and not need to rely on the stores or technology. And I, I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but also you look around, there are things happening. We'll just put it like that. So naturalistic intelligence Something I lack greatly, I would say out of all of these intelligences, this is one of my weakest ones, um, personally. This is one of my weakest ones. But that doesn't mean that I don't see the importance of it, because I absolutely do. Certainly that, and I hope I'm conveying to you the importance of all of these intelligences, because they all need to be kind of cultivated, I think. And so first, like I said, if you haven't taken the quiz yet, take the quiz. Okay, the quiz will help you figure out where you fall naturally. For me, the top ones are linguistic and music, weirdly enough. And then you'll find out other things that you're interested in, but maybe not as your strong suit. Like I'm okay at spatial intelligence. I'm okay at bodily kinesthetic intelligence. I was athletic as a kid. Um, <clears throat> I've worked really hard to grow my inter and intra personal intelligences. So those are pretty high now too. Um, very low naturalist and mathematical logical, more mathematical than logical. Those are my low ones. So I know I have to like kind of do my part to get them better. Right. So anyway, all that to say, um, the naturalist intelligence, the way to start is just going outside. Honestly, like I, that's how I started it. I would like go outside and, and put my feet on the ground, which I had never done weirdly enough. And, um, which I know people who are who are watching this might think that's crazy but like why would I put my feet on pavement it's there's rocks there it's gonna hurt so I didn't right um so I had to learn that when I moved to the south and um I started going for walks more like outside to be in nature because it's really good for you and very healthy for you so natural intelligence is super fascinating if you haven't cultivated it at all highly suggest that you do um highly suggest that you do YouTube is a great place for any of that. So I'm sure there are people who are teaching about that all the time. Um, and so with that being said, I went over a little bit, I apologize, but this is the last of this series. This is, uh, I'm not gonna go into number nine, which is what's called critical evaluation. It was added after the fact. I don't care particularly for it as a construct. You can do a self-study on it. It does exist, but for me, critical evaluation is more of a skill set that is cultivated that adds to all the intelligences it's not one of the original eight and I, I don't care much for it so we're not going to go into that but i hope this series was super interesting for you i hope that you learned a lot and the number one thing i want you to take away from it and i just talked about it today on my tiktok is you are smart okay you are smart what kind of smart i don't know you tell me but you are Everybody is. And your intelligence has to do with your purpose and your reason for being here. And so if you didn't know you were smart, you didn't know about your intelligence or your natural kind of inclinations to intelligence, perhaps you didn't realize. But let me tell you, you are smart. And if you have not understood that, known that, or believed that, I hope this is helpful for you to better understand where your intelligence lies. Okay, so you definitely have intelligence. So definitely probably one of these eight and um, or multiple of these eight all of it can be cultivated and um and so if you want to send this to friends send it to them you want to book a call book a call you want to join the academy join the academy we're enrolling for the spring semester it starts january 15th 
Um, if you are interested in learning specifically how to grow your intrapersonal, because that's my expertise, right? Intrapersonal, send um, a, an email or book a call on the website. And other than that, I will see you guys in the next series. I'm still trying to figure out what it is. So if you have any ideas, drop them in the comments. Um, but <clears throat> I will see you in the next series or I will see you on TikTok or I will see you in the academy or I will talk to you on the phone with a discovery call. Either way, appreciate you guys. Hope you like this series and I will talk to you guys very soon.